Hello and welcome to Triple P Paint, Play, and Parlay, your source for everything miniatures. It is a wonderful, windy Marvel Monday here in Central Texas. I am the Game Master, Mr. Nick. This is Lee on the paint table <laughs> for Marvel Mondays, bringing us the villain of villains of the Marvel Universe and of Captain America specifically, that is the Red Skull. Good evening, folks. We're going to paint this guy in about an hour. Um, I'm going to go just multiple ways to do it, but I'm going to go about with doing a kind of a military style when he found the Tesseract cube was back in World War II, right? Am I right, right now? So I go with that type of era paint job, not the modern paint job. And then we're going to try a little OSL uh, from the Tasterac shining onto his body. So without further ado, let's get this going. Uh, all paints I'll be using today is scale 75, except for one contrast paint from Fidel. Skull's playing with the with the injury today. Yep, he's got a broken arm. That's all right. Make it easier to get behind. That was, that was probably just the proper way to assemble him for a painting anyway. That's right. It's like, no, do it this way, dummy. Yeah. Red Skull, you don't paint Red Skull. Red Skull paints you. Oh, no, wait. Wait till we get to the, the gigantic uh, wiki entry for him, and uh, you, you'll have to eat those uh, Russian words there, comrade. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Nick uh, is the director today, and he's going to do the uh, reading of the lore. Uh, a lot of people seem to like that, so we're going to carry on with that. Thanks, uh, Vantney. Appreciate it. Thank you, Piper. Mike Piper. Appreciate everyone for being in here. I sound a little funny. I had a tooth ripped down my skull the other day. Thank you. I'm pretty sure that's YouTube, like, Lofty Pizza. There we go. Thank you, uh, Monix. Guys, uh, where are you guys from? Hang out. Chat.
Or Texas as well. How is it working with that black? Is you've used this black before? Yeah, this is the um, the base vinyl uh, uh, scale seventy five. I really like this one. Uh, it's really uh, white primer is really thirsty. Just eat this, eat this. Uh, which is not a bad thing. It's take a little more extra coats. Yeah, normally if it wasn't for show, I probably would have primed him in black, but that would have been black on black on black, and I didn't think that'd be very interesting. So just one of the standard oh, gray. Yeah, Piper, to hang out, be fun. Yeah, black on black sucks. Yeah, it's generally why I put it also uh, inside my primer, so my eye can see. Because after a while, I'm just staring at a black, all black thing the whole time. Your eyes just kind of go cross eyes. I really like it though. Vallejo makes a really nice primer. Yeah, that batch went on really good. I want to airbrush that on. I really like the style res. I have almost out of black, but uh, super matte finish. Oh, did you pick up the Monument Hobbies uh, primer or just the metallics? Uh, I only got one thing. Uh, I got the metallics. Sorry, W. So they've got at least like four or five primers uh, there on their site now, too. Yeah, they, uh... They were helpless out of everything when I was on there. I want to get their basic, basic set. That was sold out. A really cool dark, dark gray primer that I thought might be pretty good. That it'd be kind of dark enough to go dark, but still maybe show up better. Yeah. Good for camera. I don't know. Or at least you just try it. They have a, um, uh, so I don't know if you know this, Nick, but uh, Stone Res is made by Badger Airbrush. Um, so they have a primer. They have a bunch of, they're called Game Paints. It just came out. Well, I don't think they just came out. They, I just now saw them. Um, but they have one called Concrete. It's like a greenish gray color, but when it dries, it's like concrete color. Without any tent, tent to it or anything, just a plain just concrete. Hey, V, what's up?
All right, if we're gonna talk paint, I think we should talk paint. What do we think about these speed paints? Uh, speed paints, uh, I don't think they're gimmicky. I, I think they're actually beneficial one way uh, versus the other ways. Yeah, what do you think looking... about these army painters? The their... Um, I guess if you're doing a, so you, a lot of people don't understand, like, uh, or I'm not trying to say that, but from what I understand, uh, when you use a speed paint, you have to have your undercoat is what's going to bring out the color. So if you have a white, it's going to drown. And also, each color, due to the pigment con consistency, natural pigment consistency, um, some are going to be more opaque than others. I think it's they'll be okay, they'll be great. If you know how to work, it's just like contrast paints. Uh, people think they're just a throw it on or forget type of thing, but they're not. The contrast paints are there to either lend to the color, uh, highlight a color, or uh, cover up a color. It depends on what color it is. Um, I have almost, I think, almost every color. Uh, there are some that are extremely vibrant, and I'll actually be using one tonight that's uh, not opaque at all. It's uh, it's all to do with the formulation, you know, the pigment colors. I I don't think like they can ever create a one pigment or one paint uh, that can make it so you can throw it on a model while painting and it come out oh, just perfect. Have you seen uh, much of uh, any of the little controversy about the actual quality of this uh, batch of paints or anything? Or mostly just, I think, I, I don't think there's any problems with like the test uh, that went out before the big release. Um, I saw Cooper Town. I saw um, no one else uh, use them. We can put it across several types of models, different undercoats, these different colors across the board. And uh, he said that, you know, some colors did well and some colors did. Got a little bit of an echo there, B. Yeah, I'm trying to adjust the filters here. So see if you can this better. You're fine, I just need to get the filters. Back to Earth. So while that black was drying, we're going to take uh, it's called Red Ochre. We're going to do Red Skull's face. That's it, he's done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you have a good uh, night. Thanks for coming by. No, I was kidding. He has, he has made his namesake, so everything is fine.
that right over fry. How would you compare painting this guy to uh, well, Crossbones and Spider-Man now? Flatter surfaces, uh, painter's gold, I feel. Do the details a little better. Yeah, it seems a more streamlined uh, miniature. I mean, it's pretty, pretty straightforward sculpt. Yeah, I think when you start adding all those action poses, somewhat stuff like that, you start to lose detail because kind of cram so dynamic stuff and location. That's thing the bad sculpts I actually like. I personally feel like this one and you know the carnage one is a good skull too for how spindly did you get uh, mysterio yeah i came with mysterio yeah uh have you do you still have them on sprue or are you uh, i got them off the sprue and i moved a little bit of it together uh i got really frustrated because like i said everything's like it's tiny little I have Venom separated off of, uh, no, Venom's still on Sprue. Uh, Ghost Rider. Separated but not glued. Now all I'm doing is going around with gray, fully building it up. Gray that I created with 50, about 50, 50 white and black. Using the side of the brush like this, and like, just to pick up the raisins. Nice. So should we have some sort of contest to see who the loser will be that has to paint the really terrible costume Carol Danvers? <laughs> I'll paint anything once. Yeah, I would say they would have went like uh, 70s classic. Uh, like Rogue and Ms. Marvel like, oh, yeah. era had been so much better. You know, much more you could do with the sculpt too, I think. You could have done something uh, with the face that could be much more towards their origin and such, and that should have been better. Rogue one's not bad like that much. Oh, sorry, Jubilee. There, there's a Jubilee? Jubilee and Gambit. Okay. And I think Wolverine. There's Wolverine and Sabretooth. Uh, I know there's the Omega Red. That's the they're holding for me on her. All right, so I don't know if you guys can see the different transition. I'm trying to pick up the different folds of the robe and stuff like that. Go 
don't make one more sweep. To the lighter gray now. So this is the first gray I used. Dark, dark gray. A little lighter gray right here. And then did you say how much you were thinning that? Uh, this is not thin. Okay. This is great. Great. With what? Well, I use water on the water pellet, like a drop or hydrate it. I don't know if you can see that or not. Good for shading. Yeah, now, that's coming clear. And it looks really cool. Uh, just so you know, Grace, are you back in the uh, back at home? Back home, this Wednesday is Warhammer Wednesday, and I have a dinosaur, riding a dinosaur. That's something boys would like. I heard you like dinosaur. Dinosaur. On a dinosaur. You're right, you're right. Maybe on another dinosaur. I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> we don't know. Th things get crazy around here.
think it's a little bit of dark red and black watered down version or dark. But leaning towards the red. Looks like about kind of muddy water. Is that what you're going for here? For the effect or it's kind of the coloration? I'm just coloring his face right now. Going in his eye. Grab something like that. Yeah, that's cool. Now, black. Black and snow. I'd say we're running about 80% average of shows that take place during at least 15 plus mile an hour winds, if not 20 mile an hour winds, in the entire show. What? Our, our shows seem to correspond with extremely high oh, wind yeah. events. Yeah. Most shows I'm asking, is the, is the microphones picking that up? Because, man, can I hear it? I think the noise kids are okay, but uh -oh. every show. Actually, shut that window. Well, that's probably you hear it. Good. Are you happy how that turned out? Yeah. My last spring I put on it, the brighter of all.
right here. The dog does not like to be not the center of attention. Fixing Tesseract Cube <laughs> Six Foot White oh. The White's one of the most Hard work with pillars. So, and his story takes place for two, so he'll be kind of a Nazi color scheme. Oh, but they call it Hydra. So, Hydra has been fed. Sorry, Captain America. So, Grace, if you and the boys want to tune in. Wednesday, I'll be painting a dinosaur. Big guy.
That's the wrapping time. Contrast color. Operatic blue. Set this down a lot. Gonna take whites. Look at that's rack cube itself right here. Shine light out. The highlight white across this one.
grabbed all his folds of clothes and but we came back in earlier black cracks of definition sucks water down things to kind of dry I can work on this furniture let me do yeah uh go ahead and you know, uh got plenty of time so yeah that carnage right here that I made them Dark, dark red. Brick red, I guess would be the color. Wash the whole thing. While we're waiting for the skull to dry, I also have finished faces that I was working on and I want to clean up on Captain America. And so those are drying as well. It'll be time that we start to dig into the history of red skull starting with the publication history the original red skull was introduced in timely comics captain america comics number one cover dated march 1941 which was written and drawn by the team of joe simon and jack kirby on separate occasions both kirby and simon claimed to have had the original idea for the character and at the 1970 san diego comic-con kirby said the red skull was created by France Heron. Simon later credited both Kirby and Heron for having a role in the creating of Skull. The Red Skull was to appear in issue number three of Captain America Comics, as in issue number one, the Red Skull's secret identity as George Maxson, the owner of the Maxson Aircraft Company that makes airplanes for the U.S. Army. Maxson wears a mask to create the look of the Red Skull on a uh, when it is exposed, and as the Red Skull Maxon commandeers bank robberies in order to raise money to overthrow the U.S. government, declaring, quote, Of course you realize the main item in overthrowing the government is money. Stories published decades later established that the Red Skull appearing in Captain America No. 7 in October of 41 was the Nazi Johann Schmidt and that the Red Skull appearing before that point was his pawn, Joe Mack, George Mack. Now, the Red Skull also appeared in Young Allies No. 1 and No. 4. He appeared maskless in both issues, including when getting up from bed in issue No. 1 and while in a fighter jet, one other ally in No. 4. After an absence from comics for many years, both Captain America and the Red Skull were brought back in 1954 in Young Men Comics number 24, story titled Back 
from the dead. Here, the Red Skull thinking Captain America was dead was had left politics and started a big criminal enterprise in the United States. In his next appearance in issue 27, the Red Skull is once again for dead. The character returned in new stories, starting with Tales of Suspense number 65, all the way back in May of 1965. In a Captain America World War II period story run, Red Skull was established as a contemporary villain in issue 79 of 1966, with the explanation that he had been in suspended animation since World War II. For decades, the character's true face was hidden, but in Captain America 2, 97, September 84, the Red Skull unmasked in front of Captain America and his face, albeit extremely aged, is fully revealed. In the next issue, the Red Skull retells his story with his face fully visible in various ages. When the character is revealed to be alive in issue 350 in 1989 in a story called Resurrection by famous writer Mark Grunwald, the face of Johann Schmidt's original body is hidden again, but the Red Skull's face is fully visible, albeit is a cloned copy in Captain America's body. The character's origin was more fully illustrated in the miniseries The Red Skull Incarnate, with Schmidt's face fully again. Moving on to the exhaustive and perhaps exhausting fictional character biography, beginning with Johann Schmidt. Johann Schmidt was a Nazi general officer and confidant of Adolf Hitler. He had been closely affiliated with Hydra and is an enemy of S.H.I.E.L.D., the Avengers, and the interests of the United States and the free world in general. He was physically augmented by having his mind placed into the body of a clone of Captain America, the pinnacle of human perfection. He has been seemingly killed in the past only to return time and time again, like the world, schemes, world domination, and of course, genocide. In the World War II era, Johann Schmidt was born in a village in Germany to air Airman Schmidt and Martha Schmidt. His mother died in childbirth, and his father blamed Johann for her death. Johann's father tried to drown the baby, only to be stopped by the attending doctor. He later committed suicide, leaving Johann an orphan. The doctor took Johann to an orphanage where the child led a lonely existence. Johann ran away from the orphanage when he was seven years old and lived on the streets as a beggar and a thief. As he grew older, he worked at various menial jobs, but spent most of his time in prison for crimes ranging from vagrancy to theft. The Skull's real name of Johann Schmidt was not revealed in his Golden and Silver Age appearances. As a young man, Schmidt was from time to time employed by a Jewish shopkeeper whose daughter, Esther, was the only person who had treated Schmidt kindly up until that point. Seized with passion for Esther, Schmidt was tried to force himself upon her only for her to reject him. In unthinking fury, Schmidt murdered her. Schmidt fled the scene in terror, but also felt his attic joy in committing his first murder. Killing Esther, he had given vent to the rage that the world that had been building up in him throughout his young life. Hurt. Yeah, I mean, this is like just the beginning. According to the official version of the story told by Red Skull and the Nazis, Schmidt himself met Hitler while working as a bellhop in a hotel. This occurred during his late teens, around the same time that the Nazi party gained power in Germany. Schmidt wound up serving Hitler's rooms at the hotel. By chance, Schmidt was present by bringing refreshments when the Fuhrer was furiously scolding an officer for letting a spy escape during which Hitler declared he would create a better nationalist, national socialist out of the bellhop. Looking closely at the youth and sensing his dark inner nature, Hitler decided to act on his words and recruited Schmidt. In the miniseries Red Skull Incarnate, it has been revealed 
that Schmidt actually engineered his meeting with the Fuhrer, with himself disguised as a bellhop tricking his fellow orphan Dieter into trying to kill Hitler and then taking this opportunity to save Hitler's life. Dissatisfied with the standard drill instructions his subordinate used to train Schmidt, Hitler took over personally, training Schmidt as his right-hand man after Heinrich Himmler. Upon completion, Hitler gave Schmidt a unique uniform with a grotesque skull, red skull mask, and he emerged as the red skull in literal German, Rotter Tontenkopf or Rotter Tontenschneidel for the first time. His role was the embodiment of Nazi intimidation, while Hitler would remain the popular leader of Germany. To that end, the Red Skull was appointed head of Nazi terrorist activities, with an additional large role in external espionage and sabotage. He succeeded, wreaking havoc throughout Europe in the early stages of World War II. The propaganda effect was so great that the United States government tried to counter it by creating their own equivalent using one recipient of the lost Project Reaver, Steve Rogers, as the superhero counterintelligence agent in America. In Europe during the war, the Red Skull took personal command of many military actions and personally supervised the takeover and lootings of many sittings, cities and towns. The Red Skull also organized a wolf pack of U-boats, which preyed upon shipping across the world, often under the Red Skull's personal command. At first, Hitler took great pride in his protégé's successes that led the Red Skull to have anything he wanted. Hitler thus financed the construction of secret bases for the Red Skull in various locations throughout the world, many of which were, were equipped with highly advanced experimental weapons and devices developed by Nazi scientists. The Red Skull was particularly interested in procuring technological weapons that could be used for the purposes of subversion and warfare. During the war, he stole plans for the Nullitron, device that could control human minds, adapted a space warping device developed by the cyborg scientist codenamed Brain Drain, and commissioned Nazi scientists to develop a projector which would encircle and suspend sections of cities within spheres of energy. Wait, wait, wait. The scientist named Brain Drain? <laughs> codenamed Brain Drain. That's awesome. He's a, he looks like a, a Nazi Adeptus Mechanicus with a blue hood over his head. Nice. He is uh, straight out of the Giant Size Invaders number one from 1975. Nice. That is, that is just quintessential mid-70s Marvel block <laughs> villain here. All right, before you carry on, uh, you see how I softened all the front of his face and everything? And that blue wash. Okay, so now I'm actually going to do blue. Now, all my highlights are already there. So I'm just going to go in. Start painting. Back to our biography, while the Red Skull always admired Hitler for his ideological vision, he was never fully content being Hitler's subordinate. The Red Skull kidnapped and killed many of Hitler's closest advisors and eventually rose to become the second most powerful man in Nazi Germany. Now Hitler could no longer effectively control the Red Skull and came to fear him, especially since the Red Skull had made no secret his ambition plant Hitler's. Captain America, often with teenage partner Bucky Barnes, fought and thwarted Red Skull many times during the war. The heroes also fought the Red Skull when they were members of the Invaders. On one occasion, the Red Skull captured, drugged, and brainwashed Captain America. He sent the hero to kill a high-ranking officer, but with Bucky's help, Captain America broke free. Skull later temporarily brainwashed three of the invaders into serving him. 
the Red Skull and Captain America continued to engage in a series of skirmishes throughout the war. Of the renowned military officer Baron Wolfgang von Strucker, a falling out with Hitler, the Red Skull sent Strucker to Japan to found an organization that would prepare the way for takeovers in the Far East under the Red Skull's leadership. In the Far East, Strucker joined a subversive organization that became known as Hydra, severed his ties with the Red Skull, and became the head of Hydra and made it into a major threat to world peace. As World War II raged on, Hitler vowed that he, if he could not conquer the world, he would destroy it. To achieve this end, the Red Skull proposed the construction of five gigantic war machines to be called the Sleepers, which would be hidden in various locations while they generated and stored the power they would need, then be released at a future date. Their tag, the day in German, to destroy the Earth if the Allies won the war. Hitler enthusiastically instructed the Red Skull to construct the sleeper, unaware that the Red Skull intended to use them to conquer the world himself if Nazi Germany failed. In the closing days of the war in Europe, Allied intelligence received reports of a Nazi doomsday plan codenamed Der Tag to be implemented after Hitler's defeat. However, the Allies had no idea what the plan entailed. The Red Skull sent a number of his subordinates, who became known as the Exiles, and a large contingent of loyal German soldiers and their wives to a secret island base, Exile Island, where they would organize an army for use in the future. Now that the German defeat was becoming a reality, the Red Skull was more determined than ever to aim vengeance for his numerous personal defeats by Captain America and Bucky. Red Skull assigned Baron Heinrich Zemo to go to England and under the cover of stealing an experimental Allied drone plane to capture or kill Captain America and Bucky. I'll be right back and go to use restroom. However, the Red School was unaware that the Allies had just secretly parachuted Captain America into beleaguered Berlin to investigate the bag. Finally, Captain America tracked down the Red Skull, who was hidden in bunker. The Red Skull was about to hurl an armed hand grenade at his nemesis when Captain America threw his shield at him. The grenade exploded, but the Red Skull was not killed due to his body armor. He was, however, seriously hurt and partially burned in debris buried in Thinking he was dying, the Red Skull defiantly told Captain America that the sleepers would avenge the Nazis' defeat. Then suddenly, the Allied attack on Berlin began. An Allied plane dropped a huge blockbuster bomb on the bunker, causing a cave-in that Captain America barely escaped. Captain America was picked up by the Allies and returned to England only to fall into Zemo's trap, which led to Bucky's supposed death than America's falling into suspended animation for decades. Port pillars that crisscrossed over the Red Skull when the bunker caved in saved him from being struck by tons of rubble and bomb hit. The cave-in also released an experimental gas from the canisters in the bunker, which put the Red Skull into suspended animation, during which time wounds slowly healed. Moving on to the post-war era, Johann Schmidt's legacy continued to cause trouble by the way of the sleepers, which are activated by his agents as scheduled. Captain America neutralizes all the machines in turn. Johann Schmidt is eventually rescued and revived from suspended animation in modern times by the terrorist organization AIM, Advanced Idea Mechanics. The Red Skull quickly subverts a cell his own ambitions of world conquest and death of Captain America. He steals the cosmic cube after taking control of its keeper's mind with a device he planted while shaking hands and reveals that he gave Baron Zemo the order to steal the bomb but it claimed that led to Bucky Barnes's death. He had a rivalry with Zemo and hoped to set his two foes against each other. Captain America learns from the dying pilot of a plane that had been following the Keeper's plane that the Cosmic Cube had been used to destroy the plane. It tells another AIM member of his plans after getting a mind control device on him and causes him to shoot himself. 
He fights Captain America again for the first time in years after getting the Cosmic Cube on an island. He begins sending Captain America to another dimension when Captain America offers to become a servant. The Red Skull encases himself in a golden suit of armor and talks of creating a new order of knights. Captain America gets close to him while the Red Skull prepares to knight him. Captain America tries to get the Cosmic Cube, and in the fight, the island splits apart from the Cosmic Cube's power and the Red Skull falls off a cliff while trying to get the Cosmic Cube. When Johan reappears, he and Albert Malik start to antagonize each other while both claiming the Red Skull identity. Finally, Malik is the victim of an assassination organized by the Red Skull through a rogue agent and the Scourge's underworld. The Red Skull captures part of Manhattan Island, unleashes the Force Sleeper, and captures Captain America on Exile Island. The Red Skull then regains the Cosmic Cube and temporarily switches bodies with Captain America. He also uses the cube to alter the personality of Sam Snap Wilson. Weird name. Sometime later, in his first appearance outside of a title featuring Captain America, he fights Doctor Doom. Red Skull then foments racial hatred in New York and is revealed as the true power behind the Las Vegas-based Hydra Fire and clashes with Kingpin. Sometime later, the Red Skull kills Roscoe, another wearer of the Captain America mantle. He also revives the use of his Dust of Death. The Red Skull later fights Doctor Doom on the moon but is defeated. When Armin Zola, the Red Skull, seeks to transplant Hitler's brain into Captain America's body, he transforms a number of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents into his Red Skull-faced slaves. Red Skull teams with the Hatemonger, a clone of Hitler, and traps him in a flawed cosmic. Oh, I remember the Hatemonger. Mm-hmm. He's like purple KKK. Yeah, yeah. That's terrible. When? With Mark? <laughs> that, that's like on the nose, man. Good God. The Red Skull leads the Nihilist Order brief time, establishing a Nazi colony on a deserted island. Red Skull's father's daughter named Cynthia. The gas that placed the Red Skull in suspended animation wears off and his body rapidly ages to his actual years. Now physically weak and feeble in his mid-80s, Red Skull plans a final showdown which is with his arch rival. Kidnapping Captain America's closest allies, he forces Captain America to surrender himself to a medical treatment that ages his body to its rightful age. The two men, their bodies now ancient, Fight a battle to the death. They were chains of water? Yeah, this is a cripple fight. When Captain America refuses to kill him, the Red Skull dies in Captain America's arms, cursing his enemy as his elderly body shoots down. Captain America 293 then, culminating in 300. Oh, there you go. There's a glow. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about mine. I don't, I don't need an arm to hold the cube. <laughs> Nazis don't need arms. That's like a convoluted story. Nazi scientist Armin Zola had obtained DNA samples of Captain America years earlier and arranged for the Red Skull's mind to be transplanted into a cloned body of Captain America at the moment of his death. Assuming the identity of John Smith, Red Skull decides to reinvent himself in his quest for absolute power as a means to celebrate 
is cheating death. The Red Skull abandons his long-standing beliefs in National Socialism and Hitler on the belief that the Nazi philosophy made him look like a relic of the past, and turns towards American ideology. Red Skull sees much potential in the American dream of capitalism and self-determination, and sets about establishing his own foothold inside Washington, D.C., culminating in him gaining control over the Commission on Superhuman Activities, a government body in Washington that monitors and regulates superhero activities. <laughs> okay. The Red Skull also changes his mode of operations. Rather than living from one grand scheme to the next, he begins financing a score of evil, evil organizations that report directly to him, such as the militia group The Watchdog. He also employs one of the scourges of the underworld, an organization dedicated to killing supervillains. The Red Skull has the commission remove Steve Rogers from the position of Captain America and replace him with jingoist John Walker. Although Walker attempts to live up to his predecessor's ideals, Red Skull arranges for the murders of Walker's parents, driving him insane and into a downward spiral of murder as part of his plan to blacken the name of Captain America. The Red Skull kills his chief pawn in the commission right in front of Captain America. About to be exposed, the Red Skull tries to manipulate Walker into killing Rogers. When Rogers defeats Walker, the Red Skull appears to gloat what he had done to Rogers, Walker, and the reputation of Captain America. However, Rogers remains openly dubious of his claims to be his dead arch enemy. The Red Skull tries to kill Rogers with a cigarette holding a lethal dose of the dust of death. Walker hits him from behind with his shield. The Red Skull inhales the dust of death. His face takes on the appearance of a living Red Skull. His head loses its hair and its skin shrivels clinging tightly to his skull, taking on a red discoloration. The Red Skull survives the exposure due to the effects of the Super Soldier. After this, the Red Skull masterminds a conflict between the United States and Lemkaria in Acts of Vengeance Conspiracy, but is attacked by the mutant terrorist Magneto, a Holocaust survivor who wants to punish him for his involvement in Hitler's regime. Mary Magneto buries him alive with enough water to last a few months. The Red Skull remains imprisoned, close to death, and beginning to see the error of his ways until he is rescued henchman crossbow feeling ready to die in peace the red skull requests to be taken to his private estate's bed for captain america to come see him upon seeing his arch enemy's face the red skull is surprised to feel a sudden burst of hatred reignites his will to live the red skull proposes an alliance with the kingpin to bring new designer drug to new york but the king kingpin refuses to ally with the nazi the two engage in a drug war. He then defeats the Red Skull in hand-to-hand -hand combat, sparing his life on the condition that he never come near the Kingpin territory again. So the Red Skull's agents allow fellow Nazi Baron Wolfgang von Strucker to be reborn. The grateful Strucker allows the Red Skull the use of Hydra resources. The Red Skull's tenure in Washington comes to an end when he is captured by Hauptmann Deutschland, taken to Germany to stand trial for crimes against humanity, stemming from his days as a Nazi agent. The Red Skull narrowly escapes and is rescued by Armin Zola, and is forced to fake his death and to go into hiding in a Rocky Mountain compound. He recruits the Viper, a move that alienates his minions and is further rocked when his chief henchman, Crossbone, kidnaps Captain America's girlfriend, Diamondback, resulting in Captain America finding the Red Skull's new lair. Red Skull fires Crossbones and goes into hiding while the Viper, using funds she acquired from the Red Skull as part of a scheme to use televisions across America to blind TV viewers, is defeated by Captain America. That's So they were going to use a TV show to blind people while watching. <laughs> okay. 
but they're thwarted enough for him. The Red Skull discovers that he is facing the same permanent paralysis that Captain America was facing due to their exposure to the super soldier formula. When the evil scientist Superior offers Captain America a cure, Captain America refuses it because Superior said that Captain America would owe her. The Red Skull takes the cure and apparently kills Superior. Then it rages for Captain America to be kidnapped by his remaining forces, including Sharon Carter, whom he found still alive and recruits, and given a blood transfusion that cures him. Captain America's recovery views into a reluctant team-up with Red Skull, a Nazi cult that worshipped Hitler, a god, had discovered a cosmic cube that contained Hitler's soul, put there by Red Skull himself. The two try to stop the cult from fully powering the Hitler cosmic cube, but the Red Skull opts instead to send Captain America, against his will, into the cube to kill Hitler. You cannot make this shit up. <laughs> imprisoning, imper imprisoning Captain America in the cube while he uses its power to conquer humanity. Captain America escapes and uses his shield to sever one of Red Skull's arms. Hey, hey see, that's this, Red, yeah. that, this will be our special Red Skull from this issue of Captain America 445, where he loses his arm. And we'll put a mustache on the cube. Hitler cube. Yes, this is the cube. Uh, severs his arm, causing him to drop the cube. The cube becomes unstable, destroying the Red Skull. Trapped in a hellish nightmare dimension, and forced to serve as a bellhop to a world of non-European immigrants, Red Skull's will ultimately is so great that he is able to escape his prison. As a result, the Red Skull now possesses limited reality warping powers that make him a cosmic threat. He is further aided by Korvac, posing as Kang the Conqueror. He is sent to Galactus's ship to steal more power, particularly the power of Omniscience, which would serve all limits to the Red Skull's reality warping powers. The Red Skull is ambushed by Korvac, who steals his cosmic powers and banishes him back to Earth. The Red Skull later manipulates his way into the position in the form of the U.S. Secretary of Defense, Del Rusk, anagram of Red Skull to develop a biological weapon he tested at Mount Rushmore. He is exposed and defeated by the Avengers. The Black Panther beats him so badly that he breaks the Red Skull's jaw in half. The Red Skull was assassinated by the mysterious Winter Soldier under orders from the renegade former Soviet general Alexander Lukin. Wanting to possess a, the new cosmic cube Red Skull had manufactured. When the Red Skull was shot, he attempted to use the cosmic cube to switch bodies with Lucan to survive. But as the cosmic cube was still weak, he only managed to transfer his mind into Lucan's body, so that the two enemies are trapped together, waging a constant war or dominance, which the Red Skull seems to be progressively winning. During a plot to lure out Captain America, Red Skull Lucan recruited several German skinheads and made them the successors to Master Man. He then had these soldiers dubbed the Master Race launch an attack on London, which was thwarted by Captain America, Spitfire, and Union Jack. Then the Red Skull Lucan activated a Sleeper, a robot program for mass destruction that was presumably created by Doctor Doom. The robot managed to destroy a significant portion of New London Cronus headquarters and was ultimately destroyed by Captain America and Bucky. In the aftermath, the Red Skull sent a videotape announcing to the world his return, followed by Lucan holding a press conference condemning the actions of both the Red Skull and Captain America and supporting the Superhero Registration Act. Then, in his office, the Red Skull introduced Lucan 
to his old slash new associates, Crossbones, Sen. With America's superheroes divided over the act, the Red Skull manipulates events to his own ends. With the aid of Dr. Faustus, Dr. Doom, and Armin Zola, his plans involved the reunion of Captain America and his former lover, Sharon Carter, being manipulated by Faustus. In the immediate aftermath of the Civil War, the Red Skull puts his plans into action, arranging for Crossbones to shoot Captain America as he enters a courthouse in New York City. In the ensuing chaos, Carter, acting under Faustus's mental directive, assassinates Captain America. This is the only the first phase of the Red Skull's plan. Upon the discovery of his identity as Lugan, the Red Skull fakes his death and initiates the second phase of his plan, using the Cronus Corporation's vast holdings to economically cripple the United States for having S.H.I.E.L.D. agents brainwashed by Dr. Fox open fire on crowds of protesters and from the White House. The Red Skull continues his assault by engineering a riot by placing Chrono Security troops and drugged water in a protest at the Lincoln Memorial. All of this had apparently been to elevate his puppet politician, Gordon Wright, elevated in the public's eye with being credited as resolving the situation, as well as a surviving a staged attack at the Serpent Squad. Once elected, Wright will lead the country directly into a police state secretly controlled by the Red Skull. The Red Skull also plans to transfer his consciousness into Sharon's unborn child, apparently sired by Steve Rogers himself and potentially having inherited his Project Rebirth enhancements. Both schemes fail because of the impatience and incompetence of the Red Skull's daughter. Her near-fatal attack on Sharon causes her to lose the baby, and she intentionally botches her pseudo-assassination of Wright by attempting to kill him for real. As Faustus has surreptitiously tampered with Sharon's programming, she is able to rebel and, before escaping, shoots Lunken to death. This is not the end of the Red Skull. Since Zola had seconds earlier transferred his mind to one of the spare robotic bodies, but after having his current form damaged by the imposter Captain America, he is unable to return to the Red Skull, essentially trapping him in his current robotic form for the time being. <laughs> I like the, but seconds earlier had done this magic thing, like it's, like it's a 1930s serial. All right, Captain America Reborn. It has been revealed that the Red Skull did not actually kill Steve Rogers, but trapped his body in a fixed position in space and time. He was planning on using Sharon Carter and a machine created by Doctor Doom to return his body back to their time. But since Sharon destroyed the machine, his body is now drifting through time and space. Apparently, it is presumed that the Red Skull intended to transfer his mind into Roger's body. Norman Osborn decides to assist in completing his plan, the figurehead of Captain America leading his team of Avengers. He would increase popularity with this as the Iron Patriot. Stan and Crossbones find him and take him to Liberia in order to place the Red Skull's mind in his living body. Red Skull, Sin, and Crossbones land Latveria and Dr. Doom confronts them, saying that he would kill them if he was not a man of his word. Dr. Doom and Zola complete the machine end and, after Victoria Hand brings Sharon to them, they strap her in. They activate the machine and soon Steve's body returns. When Steve opens his eyes, it is shown to be red, signifying that the red skull is in control. Rogers still resides in the body, and during the Red Skull's invasion of Washington, he and Steve battle in the mind of Steve's body. Steve eventually forces the Red Skull out, placing him back into his robot body to prevent him from escaping the immediate area 
Anna Sharon hits the Red Skull with a shot of pim particles, making him a massive robot who cannot elude any pursuer's attention. While Rogers and the Avengers keep the Red Skull occupied with a team attack, he is destroyed by a missile barrage fired by Sharon on a hijacked AIM battleship. After Lucan was brought back from the dead by the power elite, side effect as a fragment of the original Red Skull mind also is revived. There have been many others who have passed themselves off as Red Skull throughout history. Of course, first is George John Maxson, created by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby. Maxson appeared as the Red Skull in Captain America number one and three. He faces Captain America during two of his latter's early missions. The Maxson is an American businessman and Nazi agent who leads a ring of spies and saboteurs. And serves as a stand-in of Johann Schmidt, the true Red Skull. Thought killed during the second encounter, though he would reappear for one last encounter with Captain America. For Malik. After the disappearance of Johann Schmidt in 1945, the reputation of the Red Skull was still formal enough to prove useful. 53 Soviet Russian KGB agent Albert Malik set up his spy criminal organization in Algeria and assumed the Red Skull's identity, pretending that he was the original who was actually serving Soviet interests in Captain America Comics number 61. During the 1950s, he faced the then active version of Captain America, who was also pretending to be the original. While the Captain, Bucky, Jack Monroe, were placed in suspended animation when his flawed replicate of the Super Soldier formula seriously affected his and Bucky's minds, Malik continued his activities and over time his links to the Soviet Union. He was responsible for the deaths of Richard Parker and Mary Fitzpatrick Parker, the parents of Peter Parker, tipped off by super criminal Gustav the Gentleman Fears for their spy staff. Alec was later killed by a scourge of the underworld operating on behalf of the original Red Skull disguised pilot. Cynthia Schmidt. Cynthia Sen Schmidt is the daughter of Johann Schmidt, who briefly adopts the Red Skull moniker after being scarred. The Clone Following the Avengers vs. X-Men storyline, the Red Skull mysteriously returns and assembles a team called the S-Men. The Red Skull's S-Men attack Rogue and the Scarlet Witch in Professor X's grave and steal the mutant's body. In his hideout, the Red Skull is then seen removing Professor X's brain in a plot to eradicate the mutant menace. This Red Skull is revealed to be a clone of the original created by Armin Zola, 1942, and held in cryogenic stasis in the event that Germany lost the war. Using part of Professor X's brain with his own, the Red Skull brainwashes the Scarlet Witch part of a plot to wipe out the world's mutant population. Rogue attacks the Scarlet Witch and they fight until they both discover the lobotomized body of Professor X. The Red Skull arrives and reveals that he has fused his brain with Professor X's brain. Using Professor X's telepathy, the Red Skull provokes ordinary citizens of New York into a mass assault against even potential mutants, even managing to take control of four. However, his telepathy is still erratic, with Red Skull being unable to completely control Captain America in an attack against him by Wolverine, cutting off his right hand and disrupting his powers long enough for Rogue and the Scarlet Witch to break free. And this dude's always getting this. Make sense? Yeah. Oh. Team ultimately forced the Red Skull to retreat after Rogue manages to temporarily disrupt his powers. Havoc mockingly comparing the Red Skull to the jock who beats up gay kids to conceal his own homosexuality. Hey. 
During the Axis storyline, Magneto finds out that the Red Skull has turned Genosha into a concentration camp of mutants and still has Professor X's brain inside of them. Magneto attacks the Red Skull, but is quickly stopped by the S-Men. The Red Skull mind tortures Magneto with visions of those closest to the mutant suffering while being unable to do anything to stop it. After being freed by the Scarlet Witch, Rogue, and Havoc, he bites down on a vial beneath his skin of mutant growth hormone, giving himself enough power to fight. When the Scarlet Witch, Rogue, and Havoc want to leave the island and alert the rest of the Avengers and what the Red Skull is doing, Magneto wants to stay and fight. Before they can do anything, the Red Skull appears. The Red Skull now has the group mind control. He plans on using the Scarlet Witch's power to shape reality in his image. He tells Magneto to bow if the Scarlet Witch were to remain alive. But Magneto performs a sneak attack enough to break free of the Skull's will and control over others. After killing the S-Men, Magneto attacks the Red Skull, who then tells Magneto that Professor X's greatest fear was leading the X-Men. Magneto kills the Red Skull while the others look on in horror. Magneto believes everything is over, only for the Red Skull to appear as a giant called Red Onslaught. In an attempt to defeat the new Red Onslaught, his army of Stark Sentinels, created by the information acquired from Tony Stark during the time of the Superhuman Registration Act, Magneto gathers a team of villains to try to take the Red Skull's forces by surprise. The Scarlet Witch attempts to cast a spell that will invert the Red Skull and bring out the part of Professor X that still exists in his brain. However, the plan backfires when the resulting spell causes the moral inversion of all heroes and villains in the area. With the villains now the only hope to defeat the corrupted heroes, Captain America is forced to protect the Red Skull, now calling himself the White Skull. From the evil Avengers, while Spider-Man works with the inverted villains to fight off various corrupted heroes. Doctor Doom is able to summon the spirit of Brother Voodoo, possess the Scarlet Witch, and invert the spell. The Red Skull sacrificing his heroism and freedom to restore the heroes to normal. The Red Skull is later taken away by Doctor Doom. As part of the all-new, all-different Marvel, it is revealed that the Red Skull is hiding in Avengers Mansion, now a themed hotel. Various Avengers teams have moved onto new bases. In a secret underground room, along with Sin, whose original appearance has been restored ever since he was defeated. He is nearly discovered when Quicksilver and Deadpool investigate the room and uses a psychic suggestion to convince them that the room is empty, as well as planting a command in Quicksilver's subconscious will be triggered later. During the Avengers standoff storyline, the Red Skull infiltrates the S.H.I.E.L.D. facility Pleasant Hill by disguising himself as a priest named Father Patrick. Patrick, the Red Skull, secretly instigate an uprising of the facility's brainwashed inmates by manipulating Baron Helmet Zemo and the Fixer into restoring them to normal. In the aftermath of the battle with the villains of Pleasant Hill, the Red Skull founds his own version of Hype, Sin, and Crossbones. Their first strike occurs when they use Tobik, a sentient cosmic cube, that once belonged to the Red Skull, now educated to perceive Hydra as a great organization, to manipulate Steve Rogers' memories to believing of being a Hydra sleeper agent since childhood. Although the Red Skull is unaware that the Hydra converted soldier now intends to stage a coup of the organization for his own ends, the Red Skull eventually mounts an assault on the Avengers using previously planted commands to take control of the team. But Deadpool is able to resist him long enough to place Magneto's old helmet on Rogue's head, rendering Rogue immune to telepathy long enough to knock the Red Skull out and take him to be operated on by the Beast. The fragment of Professor X's brain is extracted from the Red Skull, 
But although Rogers attempts to take custody of the fragment for his own ends, Rogue and Johnny Storm fly up and incinerate the brain fragment, leaving the Red Skull to be taken into custody by Rogers. Yeah, he's dead, though. Um... They take some for they take it up in the air and incinerate part of Professor X. Um, although he is rescued by Sin, Sin and Crossbones subsequently betray the Red Skull to prove loyalty to Rogers, who kills the clone for good by pushing him over the cliff outside the Red Skull's mansion, with Rogers revealing never being loyal to the Red Skull from the beginning. During the Secret Empire storyline, the disheveled man in a war-torn World War II uniform that introduced himself as Steve Rogers alongside people claiming to be Bucky and Sam Wilson encounters the Red Skull's clone who plans to take them home as the other Steve Rogers is hanging from a rope tied to a tree. He finds himself next to a rambling man. As the Red Skull's clone takes the rambling man away, he tells the other Steve Rogers that his time comes soon. The other Steve Rogers asks the Red Skull's clone where he is, and the Red Skull's clone claims that they are in hell. He also states that they are nothing but ghosts that are remnants fading into death. The Red Skull's clone then uses a barbed bat on the other Steve Rogers' chest, stating that the only path to peace is death. The Red Skull's clone is torturing the other Steve Rogers with a burning, thorn-wrapped piece of wood. The Red Skull's clone claims he is granting the other Steve Rogers peace and is about to deliver the killing blow to the other Steve Rogers. Before he can strike, the other Steve Rogers sees the beautiful blonde girl he saw at the beginning of the series, who was the same one that was poisoned that he thought had died. He realizes that there is still hope and evades the Red Skull's clones' attack. Other Steve Rogers then tackles the Red Skull's clones, and they both plummet off the cliff into the water below. Red Skull's clone calls the other Steve Rogers an idiot. Action. And that's the end of the Red Skull's clone. Hmm. Um... There are some other ones in X and Elseworlds, but those. Weird one in the Ultimate Marvel Universe. Weird history. I don't remember anything about this Professor X's brain thing at all. Um, some of some of the latter stuff I don't you know remember either from even the Captain America stuff, but the X Men stuff, no, but no clue about. That. Very weird group. And then Deadpool being the centerpiece of part of the story is really weird. What do you think of him? Done. Have to put it on later. We try.
I guess we'll call it early. Got a good time. Uh, yeah, he's got to dry anyways. I, uh, hit him up with dark red. Pretty good. Appreciated him. Well, I hope you guys have fun. And as very much. Thank you for joining us tonight on Triple P Paint Play and Parlay for our Marvel Mondays. We got the Red Skull all the way done and great work on Carnage. We are working our way through the box set, brain set, and some additional heroes that are going to be joining the mix as we work on getting up to a full game of Marvel Crisis Protocol. Tomorrow we will start Tuesday Sprue Day and starting as the first part also of our Guardians of the Galaxy series. We will be assembling and painting up all of that team as being one of the teams we will bring you when we start playing on the tabletop Marvel Crisis Protocol. We're just about ready to start broadcasting our kill team matches and then we will be expanding into more PC gaming and also Marvel Crisis Protocol when that is ready. And until tomorrow, this is Mr. Nick saying good night.